scripture. Why are you throwing that inner Christ thing in, that ugly looking inner Christ thing that talks about that the world is bad scripture in there? Oh no. Uh, I, I sense a pig one and a pig two concerning the story of the three little pigs, you know? Oh, Mac, you should put out scriptures that, you know, blessing people and encouraging people and uplifting people all the time. You know? I mean, leave that inner Christ stuff alone, you know? That's ugly. That's not attractive, Mac to talk about that stuff that this world is evil and is controlled by the god of this world blind them eyes of men and he you know conducted this ideal system for a long time to, to concerning the spirit of man in christ that people truly and genuinely trying to find out what this spirit of antichrist is all about not trying to find the truth not settling for the comfortable lies instead of the hardcore truth. Hmm, comfortable lies. Well, the topic of this message, I should call it that, comfortable lies, not, not mature, spiritually mature enough to handle hardcore truth. Well, and well, those that says and claim that you follow everything of what the word of God says, in it, spirit of inner Christ is in the Bible. It's in first John, it's in first John. Uh, uh, first John and it's in second John, you know, if you if you say Mac, you shouldn't even touch on that subject of Antichrist. Well, topic of this message is talking about the reality of being, is he going to hit me? <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> okay. A topic of this message, the reality of, you know, um, uh, being entangled, un, well, well, let me see. Entangle yourself out of the lies. Entangle yourself out of the lies and go to war. You know what I'm saying? Entangle yourself out of the lies. You are, look, Tim, to Second Timothy, second chapter, talks about, I think, the four verse talks about or the third verse i mean yeah fourth verse talks about we're being people being entangled in this affairs of this world you know what i'm saying you are in how much you ever question to ask yourself are you entangled in the world's affairs the affairs of this world concerning you they the world says go to school the world says go to work the world says go over here. The world says go over there. The world says go as what uh, Zachariah describes it. The world says go to and fro and do things that will invest in the ideal of a world system that, you know, benefits you in the flesh. Yes, will benefits you in the flesh. And ah, forget about that spirit thing, you know, that forever and ever you know, spirit thing that, you know, will cost you an eternal price, you know, that that world system make want to hopefully that you do not remember that spiritual part, you know, that spiritual warfare that has been going on longer than the world, the earth has ever existed, you know. Uh, that's what the world system, that's what Satan's uh, agenda, you know, forget about the spirit, focus on the natural entangle yourself up with the sports entangle yourself up with news entangle yourself with the hobbies that you have entangle yourself with music entangle yourself with everything that's out here in the world see now watch this there's a difference like because y'all think of well i watch football i tell y'all i love football and i watch football but the question is is football entangling me you know what i'm saying how it did i allow what I love to entangle me. Oh, no, I didn't allow that to entangle me. See, there's a balance of learning how to do certain things in this world. He, but God, Jesus says, you know, be in the world, but not of it. You know what I'm saying? I am not of this world. You know, I'm in the world, in the world. They, I like some stuff in the world and I like this and I like that, but I, I'm not all entangled in it. You know what I'm saying? 
that, you know, a lot of people are totally so much at politics. Oh my God, that's probably the most notorious entanglement out there. Politics, people are entangled with liars talking about they care about people, you know, and trying to help people, you know, out and make the, you know, to how they run the laws and systems in this country, but totally the opposite, you know? People are entangled up in that and thinking that they can make sense of their life in this idea. But it's so much entanglement going on in this world, extremely, but have you questioned, are you entangled? Look, it's one thing to go to school and watch this, it's another thing to be entangled in school. It's another thing to have a job and work in, but it's another thing to be entangled in the job. That means the job becomes more, I mean, the earth becomes more a priority than the priorities of God. That's what people say, they hope, I keep God first, I keep God first, I keep God first, and I'm like, in, in God's spectrum, the majority of people of this world does not keep him first in God's spectrum because I will show you what it really means to keep hello how you doing y'all have a wonderful day all uh, right you know I will show you uh I, well I've been trying to show people about how to truly keep God first you know and the thing is you know people think that this world well the church you know teaching you that oh this is how you keep God first and keep God first I'm looking and shaking my head like, oh my God. You know what I'm saying? The thing is, the thing is keeping God first. Well, it, it, they say seek ye first the kingdom of heaven. And I'll tell you, you know, is the church seeking first the kingdom of heaven? Hmm. I mean, ever you examine that idea? Well, it's supposed to be this simple. If they seek ye first the kingdom of God, and they are trying to establish the kingdom of God on earth, uh, uh, bringing a king's dominion over on the earth that the kingdom dominates the other force. See, in order to truly bring the kingdom of God is that your force has to dominate the other force. You know what I'm saying? Or as when, you know, a prophecy that Jesus said that the kingdom of heaven suffer with violence and the violence take it by force, that there should be a force, you know, uh, you, if, you, if you're powered by the Holy Ghost and you're applying what the Word of God says, you're supposed to be having a driven force that is uh, bringing uh, people out of darkness into the marvelous light, you know what I'm saying? You're supposed to be operating a powerful force that the world cannot, with, can, cannot stop. Because like I said, Jesus is the light of the world and his and Jesus is the light of this world and it, this light is a great force and it's a force that uh you know it's it's so powerful darkness is not supposed to have the power to match it you know what I'm saying but if you're having this religious force that you know Jesus Christ hated you know I mean he did not like the religious scribes and Pharisees harassing him as he's trying to teach the kingdom of God to the people. He he doesn't like religion. He hates religion. I keep trying to tell the atheists that Jesus hated religion. So in the Bible, it says that he's, you know, hated the idea of the scribes and Pharisees bothering him, interrupting him, trying to teach the people the kingdom of God that they can have better life and have a better relationship with their creator. And here come the scribes and Pharisees with their ridiculous questions. They're trying to throw Jesus off and Jesus answered them and, you know, and called names to him, you know, a force, a force that, 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 that is trying to shine a light in where darkness is trying to establish itself. But they're not trying to take it by force. This religious system is all about making sure that people that are, say that are of God are entangled, entangled in the affairs of this earth, entangled in all kind of things, you know. Anything that is of the earth, you know what I'm saying? When you see, it's one thing for me to wrap a string around me, 
wrap one string around me, you know, wrap one string. But it's another thing to have a bunch of million strings wrapped around me and I'm wrapped up in it and, you know, trapped up in it, can't even move, can't even move. Ooh, that sounds like the spirit conditions of a lot of people these days. You can't even move because you're so wrapped up. Hello, sir. Have a good day. All right. You're so wrapped up and tangled up spiritually. You cannot move spiritually because you're so wrapped up and entangled with the uh, affairs of this world concerning whatever, you know, thing that's going on in the world you love and you desire and you put too much into, then you put too much in the things of God. You put too much emphasis on what you're doing on the earth, the more emphasis of God. Because here's the thing, you know, the 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 the, the reason why most Christians are, you know, are in this pro problem is because really the you know ideal of the church is not following the instructions of the Word of God concerning, like you know people you know these ministers says that well they operate by the Spirit. I'm led by the Spirit. I'm led, but it says in Ephesians four. The spirit, it's, it, in Ephesians 4, it talks about the unity of the spirit. It talks about the unity of the spirit. More likely, this spirit that he's talking about, that Paul is writing now, is going to only be as powerful as much as the unity is going to be there. You know, the spirit it will only operate in its maximum power as much as the unity will be there and it's called the unity of the faith you know what i'm saying that the church is supposed to operate it but not churches but the church the body of christ is supposed to operate in it that is one of the reasons why christians are having a difficult time to truly have a relationship with god and and, and truly to be operating the power of god to an extent that what we're supposed to operate in the greatness of god's you know that he has died, Jesus Christ died on the cross that we have. But the thing is, and, and they can't break the bondage of the entanglement of this world because they desire to continue to participate in the negative things in, in this world and too caught up in the positive things of this world that they just too entangled up to get out of it and to truly go to war because we're supposed to be going to war with the kingdom of darkness. This is what this is about war. I mean, Paul did not tell us to put on the whole armor of God for nothing. He didn't wrote Ephesians 6 for a chapter for nothing to tell us that we're supposed to go to war. Here's the war gear. You put it on. You go to war against the principalities and the powers and the rules of darkness and spiritual wickedness in high places. This is about war. It always been about war. It never been about relaxing in your, your success of becoming this person in the earth and or going to school or going to the job. And it's not supposed to be all about that. It's about waging war against the kingdom of darkness. It's always been about that. But of course, your church system is trying to make you say, oh, no, just become successful in the eyes of men and look good in the front of the eyes of men and be blessed in that ideal spectrum. And that's what it really is all about. No, it's not all about that. It's about waging war against the kingdom of darkness and shining the light and the, and, and operate in the power of God to, you know, combat the kingdom of darkness and take territory, take domain from the kingdom of darkness, that which is not happening because there's a lot of confusion, conflict, and chaos. It's happening all across the world, showing the evidence of a lack of the light of the power of God manifesting itself. And the thing is, if we truly want to be about what we're supposed to be about, we will understand that we need to question, you know, we entangle up in this world, you know what I'm saying? And we can't move to go to war against and speak the sword of the Lord concerning our mouth. Speak against the things that are going on in this world. Speak the truth and speak the truth and get that loin because I think a lot of Christians are not having that loin on their belt because a lot of people don't want to follow truth or don't want to even consider even listening to the truth and applying it, even in church. So, so some people don't got no belt on a war, so I don't know how they're going to run after the enemy, you know, 
with, and carry a sword on the side of them when they don't have no law and the truth to support it to truly combat the kingdom of darkness but that is another message but i hope you understand what i'm saying get out of entangle out of this world system and get ready for war against the kingdom of darkness that's what you should be all about to god be the glory of him forever and ever in jesus name amen